Hey, Fly Tires, how are you doing today? How's everybody doing and where's everybody from? And is it hot or cool there? It's been, um, it's been moderately cool, but very rainy in the east. And I, I really wish we could send some of our water um, to the west because the west is the west is really suffering from from heat and drought and, and we just had um, Days and days and days and days of rain and we're supposed to get more so we can't even fish Most of our rivers here um, Right now because we've got so much water and I just wish we could run a big pipeline to Montana and Idaho and Wyoming Because um, we got lots of it so who's here? Ken's here. Mahoney is here from rainy Rhode Island. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, Mahoney, it's funny. Uh, last July was the driest I can ever remember in 45 years of living in Vermont. And I think this July has got to be one of the rainiest I've ever seen. So um, it's a total, total reversal. Um, but, um, you know, there are Trout are under a lot of a lot of stress in the Western United States, and not that you shouldn't fish, but um, everyone needs to really take care. Um, and uh, if the water's warm, only fish till uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, or don't fish at all, and be super careful about uh, releasing fish. Don't take them out of the water; just get them, uh, play them quickly, and and get them back into the water, or get them back swimming freely as, as quickly as you can because um, uh, we, we put a lot of stress on these trout populations and more and more people than ever are, are fishing. So um, we, need to, we need to take care of the resource. We need to do what we can to help. All right, enough, enough, uh, enough of my sermon. Um, we're going to tie a damselfly today. And it's, um, I think it's a pretty sexy pattern. Um, I really, I really like this pattern. It's the best, it's the best dry damselfly I've ever seen. Um, and it's not, it's not terribly easy to tie. I, I had to do, I had to do about eight or nine of them before I got it looking even halfway decent. So, um, when you first tie this, this, uh, Gibson's damselfly today, um, don't worry about the first one coming out, uh, looking sexy um it'll be fishable and so don't don't throw it away it'll definitely be fishable because all you want is an impression of a damselfly on the water but um but don't worry too much if it doesn't come out looking perfect because mine probably won't come out uh looking perfect today and you'll see you will be the judge luckily we don't have flagler here today um anyway um fish eat a lot of damselflies, um, unlike dragonfly, they're not as strong a flyer as a dragonfly. And um, not only do they, they fall in the water a lot, when they're hatching, they sometimes don't take off and they fall in the water. And when they're flying around, they often fall in the water. And then they form mating flights, just like mayflies and caddisflies, and, um, and get on the water when they, when they form these mating flights. And, and uh, fish are on the lookout for them. Now, uh, this was designed as a trout fly, but I, I think it's an equally effective uh, bass fly, largemouth, smallmouth, and, uh, and panfish, because all of those guys eat damselflies. And I think, I think if you fish in uh, really heavily fished areas for particularly largemouth bass, but also smallmouths, where they've seen... Um, a lot of conventional poppers, and they've seen a lot of uh, conventional lures, uh, but they haven't seen many imitation of damselflies uh, because you know conventional fishermen can't really imitate a delicate little damselfly. But well, luckily, we can um, with our fly rod. So I think that in in really heavily fished areas, uh, bass areas, um, this is is going to be an ace up your sleeve. Um, it uh, you know, both for smallmouth and largemouth, and of course for panfish. Um, how do you fish this fly? Well, you just throw it out there, and hopefully something will inhale it as soon as it lands. And if not, uh, you don't want to work it very hard. You want to just throw it out there, 
and give it um, an occasional twitch, just a little bit of a twitch by stripping just a little bit of a line, just enough to let uh, the fish know that it's something alive. You don't want to strip this very fast. Um, just want to give it a little little um, wrinkle on the water. Um, so, uh, you know, any place that, that fish have been hammered pretty hard, uh, this should be a really, really good bass fly. Now it's also, it, it is also a trout fly. Um, Doug Gibson developed this fly for the uh, Lagunas in uh, Patagonia because uh, they do a lot of pond fishing there, lakes and ponds in Patagonia, and they have very large trout that, that eat a lot of damselflies. And, uh, and Doug uh, developed this fly for there. But um, any place, any weedy trout stream, um, this, and this applies to probably most tailwater rivers that you're going to fish, like the Missouri, the North Platte, uh, you know, there's um, gobs and gobs of tailwaters. And they often have big damselfly populations. And I remember once the late Paul Ruse, um, who was kind of one of the early pioneers of, of fishing the Missouri River from a drift boat, um, told me that uh, the dam a damselfly imitation dry was one of his aces in the hole for the Missouri when the fish were sipping little trichos or little PMDs and he spotted a big trout. He would throw on a dry damselfly and put it over the fish and often the fish would take it. And they don't see a lot of dry damselflies. Uh, so they're not so suspicious of an imitation of a damselfly. So um, it's a great pattern for trout, bass, and panfish. Bluegills, bluegills, big bluegills will eat these things. And um, it's, uh, it's a really cool fly. Now, it was developed by a gentleman named Doug Gibson. Doug Gibson is uh, probably one of the longest serving Orvis endorsed guides, winner of a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, Doug, Doug is, uh, was head guide at Three Rivers Ranch in Idaho. And he's been, been a close friend for um, many, many years. He's, um, I think he's 81 this year and he still rows a drift boat. He's not head guide anymore, but he's kind of, kind of guide emeritus. Um, Doug still, still hangs around the ranch and, and uh, shuttles, uh, shuttles boats back and forth and is just kind of a, a mentor to the younger guys. But he's one of the finest human beings I've ever met. And he still ties hundreds of dozens of flies every winter at 80 years old. He used to be a commercial tire for Orvis. He used to be one of our, well, back when we had all domestic tires, uh, Doug used to be one of our commercial tires. So a real legend. Uh, there's a YouTube uh, video on the new Fly Fisher channel called the Doug and Lonnie story, which is the story of Doug and Lonnie Allen, the uh, owner of uh, Three Rivers Ranch in Idaho, and the, and their lifetime, um, their lifetime together as friends and coworkers, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful story. So if you get a chance, watch that. Uh, Doug's a Doug's a pretty cool guy, and I would have invited Doug to come on and um, talk me through this fly, but Doug. Uh, Doug doesn't do the internet in any way, shape, or form. Um, that video had been out for about four months before Doug even figured out a way to ask somebody to, to play it for him. So he's not really, uh, not really. he's kind of digitally challenged. Uh, but he does lots of other things. He makes arrowheads and bows and, uh, you know, uh, agates. And um, Doug, just, Doug just does all kind of cool stuff. Anyway, enough about Doug, but watch that video if you can. So we're going to tie uh, Gip, Gibson's uh, damsel today. It's a great pattern. Um, it, it requires a f uh, fairly minimal materials. It requires a blue bucktail or long deer body hair if you have it, but bucktail works better. Uh, a long, a long, sh uh, short, a long, uh, short fibered grizzly saddle and some elk hair, um, preferably bleached, uh, bleached elk or, or bull elk, uh, preferably a light color. Um, so, and then it's going to, going to look like that in the end. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool fly. All right. So do we have any questions? I don't think so. We have a lot of greetings. We have, I don't one, have one question and that's on materials. 
Chris is asking, he's saying that he doesn't have blue bucktail. Could he go with, should, should he go with chartreuse white or chartreuse white or olive? Yeah, I would go with a green, Chris. There's a lot of chartreuse uh, damselflies uh, um, that, you know, I've seen them in, in blue and chartreuse and yellow um, and tan. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, don't worry about the color. I don't know if the color is that important. But, uh, but, you know, a lot of damselflies are blue, and that's why I tied it in blue. Most of the ones I see are blue. But, yeah, um, and if you do have damselflies in your area, just check check and see uh, check and see what color they are. I see I'm frozen here. Oh, I'm unfrozen. <laughs> okay. So uh, you could tie a uh, – Ken, you could tie this in any, anything from – no, you, you could tie it down to a size 14 probably. Uh, I'm going to tie it in a, tw I'm going to tie it in a 12, um, but, um, uh, you know, you could tie it anywhere from a size eight, probably to a size 14. Um, I don't think damsels get that much smaller than that. And, uh, yeah, you could put flash on it, Tim, if you want. I don't, Doug didn't. And, uh, but yeah, you could, you could add flash. You could add lots of things to it. Okay. Let's start. So the first thing we're going to do, oh, I got to get a bear hook. I forgot. All right. So I'm going to use a size 10, 3X long hook. You could also use a 2X long hook if you wanted. Adjust my camera a little bit here so it's a little more centered. You could use a 2X long hook. You could use a 2X dry fly or a 2X nymph, depending on how, you know, if you expect the trout to be giant, you probably want to use the nymph hook. Um, it'll still float. It'll still float a, uh, a nymph hook. The way this fly is tied, but uh, if, you know, if you want a little bit better flotation, most of the fish are going to be small. You could tie it on a two X long dry fly. It wouldn't work quite as well on a standard length dry fly. And then I'm going to start my thread. I'm using six O black. You can use any color you want. And I'm going to start it up near the head. And stuff tends to slip around on this fly. So I am gonna I'm gonna cover my whole shank with thread first. Don't need to be neat. This is all gonna be covered up, but you just want something that grips there before you even start playing around with this. In fact, it's probably better if it's not really neat and that that base there is a little rough. And then you want to come back to you know somewhere around a third back from the eye. Don't crowd the head on this because um, when you finish off this, uh, pulling this blue bucktail over the top, it takes a fair amount of room to secure that properly. So um, come back about a third. And then we're going to prepare some elk hair. So I'm going to take this nice piece of uh, bleached elk and I'm going to cut not a huge amount uh you know pencil pencil diameter maybe about that much and I'm going to clean off all the fuzz at the base I'm going to hold this by the tips and just Flick it around a little bit, pull out the fuzz, short hairs, maybe hold it up near the tip a little bit more and get rid of some of those shorter hairs. They're just going to get in the way. And then uh, elk hair sometimes tends to have a curl to it. And to prevent your the curl from uh, translating into your wing, I just like to roll the elk hair in my fingers and that will kind of take that, take that main curl out of the bunch of elk hair. 
Okay, put it in your stacker. And oh, for this fly, you need a really big stacker. So find the biggest stacker, the widest stacker that you have. And you may even have to improvise uh, with something else like a lipstick tube or something like that because you you can't get away with a you know the the narrow thin stacker that we typically use for uh, stacking hair because um, not so much for this elk hair but for the bucktail you're gonna need it so now I've got my nice neatened up bunch of elk hair got a couple of hairs there that got in the way I'm going to bring it back over to my hook. And you want the wing to be about a shank length. I see a hair in there that I don't like there. Okay. So you want it to be about a shank length. Transfer it forward to that tie-in point. And take a pinch wrap. Take another pinch wrap. Take another pinch wrap. Try to keep that on the top of the hook. So I've got that secured. And now I want to go back over that elk hair. And the first few wraps backward, I kind of I kind of spiral it. It's just easier to secure it down. And then cut that on an angle. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, being too neat here at this part or even tapered because we're going to cover all that up with hackle. So, um, and then you want to secure those butts at the end. And then you can come forward with a little bit more authority to make sure that that hair is secured in there. And don't worry about those little doodads there. Then you lift it up, probably done this before, wind a dam of thread in front of the wing until it stands sort of upright like so. Let me just uh, change my angle a little bit here. Focus it. And then divide the hair in two equal bunches. Just eyeball it. You can use a dubbing needle. You can use your fingers. So you can see I've kind of divided it. And I'll angle it this way. And then make some figure eight turns. Through the, through the elk hair to separate those. So what you're basically tying here is a spent wing. Like so. Yeah. So it's going to look like that. And then you can take some uh, posting wraps around the base, which is just carefully going around angle that a little bit going around the base of each wing like so and then make a turn in between around the shank and then post the other side like so and then make another turn whoops see if you don't make that you don't make that turn the wing will pull off so now you got two equal bunches of hair I'll give you a better view of that two equal bunches of hair on either side and then We're going to focus on the rear end of the fly. So I'm going to adjust my camera here. And if you got a hair that sticks out, either preen it back in place or cut it off. 
Any questions so far, Julia? Um, not yet. Well, we did have one question about um, UV glue. I don't know if you want to cover that right now, but I'll, I'll ping it to you. There um, is always a UV glue question. <laughs> uh, fly fishing is life was saying that Tim always asks or always talks about having a reaction to UV glue. Um, and do, and they're wondering if you have any idea what his symptoms are. That's uh, yeah, his face breaks out. His, okay. his, it, it's a rash. It's a rash type deal. And I think his eyes puff up. So it's some kind of allergic reaction. All right. That's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Tim next time he comes on. He'll tell you all about it. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to prepare our bucktail body and tail. So get that big stacker. And then I'm going to take my nice blue, damsel blue bucktail. And I like the hair from the base of the bucktail for this fly. And you want to grab a lot more than you think you're going to need. So I like to start with a really big bunch because you're gonna you're gonna lose a bunch of this in the process. So I like to start with a big honking piece. This might be too much, but that we can solve. So the first thing you're gonna do is hold it by the tips and get rid of all the loose hairs in the bottom. You may even want to go a little bit further up because you want you want the the bucktails that are, extend the whole length of this bunch. You don't want any shorter ones in this. And then here's the tricky part: is putting this bucktail in the stacker. So you just have to kind of work it around until you get all or most of the hairs inside that tube. And then let it drop. And then, you know, if your bucktail is really too top heavy, you can cut it to cut it shorter. Um, but you will need to have enough bucktail to extend the whole length of that fly plus the tail plus a fairly good overhang at the front. So don't cut your bucktail too short. I originally wanted to tie this with deer body hair, um, but I couldn't find any deer body hair that was um that was long enough to do it properly and i also found that the deer body here was not as durable so the bucktail is going to be a lot more durable so stack this and then pull it out and you'll see you have you know relatively good this doesn't have to be perfect this can be tapered a little bit but you have a bunch of bucktail and then um, you can cut this, cut this so that the ends are even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my fly and I want the tail to stick out at least a body length. And then I want it to extend quite a bit over the eye. So I want it to go to about, but you can't see it, but it's here. And I'm going to cut the bucktail and even it off there. I'm going to cut it at that spot. It just helps. It just helps uh, manipulate things if you if the butt ends of the bucktail are even. Okay. So now the hard part: the extended body. So we want this thing. I'm going to switch glasses too here. Get my close-up glasses. And this is going to be tough getting in here with the camera. But we want the body to at least extend uh, a shank length beyond the fly or even a little bit more. Damsel flies have a long, skinny body. So I'm going to measure that. I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to take a number of really tight turns over that bucktail. And I'm going to wind forward a little bit because you've got to have this secured. Otherwise, when you try to make that extended body, it's going to twist on you. So there we are. And just check it 
And that's pretty good. It's not, it's not going to twist all around. So I think I've got that secured pretty well. Now you're going to come to the back. This is the hard part. Tom, this is a, this is a good question. Yeah. Where, where on the bucktail are you cutting the material from the base or the mid tail? From the bottom. From the bottom. Okay. From the very bottom where the coarsest hair is. So you want okay. it from, from down here at the bottom. And if you know, if you want a little darker color, you can take this stuff that was originally brown that got dyed blue. But you know, this stuff is nice and bright. But you want it from the bottom. You don't, it's too fine up here at the tip. That's this this you want to save for stream streamers and saltwater flies and stuff. Usually you don't use this stuff at the bottom, so it's a it's a uh, it's a fly that you can use that bucktail that's way down at the bottom of the that's really coarse that's way down at the bottom. It's almost like a cross between bucktail and deer body here when you get down there toward the bottom. All right, so the extended body is fussy. Not fussy, it's a pain. What you want to do is you want to take your thread and go around the bucktail, and you have to flip that bobbin. And this thing's going to get in the way. You have to flip that bobbin, and you're going to kind of spiral. You're going to flip that bobbin around. Some vices, it's easier, some vices, it's harder. But you can see why I wanted that really extend. I really wanted that that uh, that bucktail secured to there because otherwise it's going to all rotate here until you get to you know right at the end like there. I'm going to go even further. And now the really hard part is you're going to go back the other way. So you're going to kind of cross over those wraps and go back the other way and it's going to slip on you it's going to slip out of position it's going to be a pain in the butt but it'll all come out right in the end hopefully and it slips down it keeps slipping up And I'm just going to stop there. Now I'm going to take one more. I don't like the way it looks. I'm going to try to get one more under the base there. There we go. And then, so now we've got our extended, and I went too far. I, I kind of wanted a little, little fringe at the end there. I didn't quite get it, but that's okay. They don't have really pronounced tails anyways at the end of their body. So that's the extended body. You might want to neaten things up here. There. Okay. There's your extended body for your damsel. And then you're going to reach this. You're going to try to grab all this blue stuff. And what I do at this point is I take those wings and I push them forward, get them out of the way. And you're going to take this, this blue stuff and you're going to take a piece of painter's tape or a hair clip or something and just put a, put a piece of tape at the tip of those hairs. It just keeps them. I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't. So I just wrapped a piece of painter's tape around the tip just to keep just to keep them out of the way um eh? steven's steven's asking if using a pair of clamping forceps would work in holding the tail yeah but well yeah but they'd fall down because they're heavy right they they the the painter's tape doesn't doesn't make it fall over but yeah you could probably use a pair of forceps okay it looks great by the way it's a sexy fly. <laughs> it's a sexy fly. Okay. Now you have to find a really long and uh, skinny saddle, grizzly saddle. And this is not easy. So do the best you can. 
Um, this is a really long one, and you want fibers that are super short. So you want a long, long, skinny saddle hackle because, um, you know, the way Doug ties this, um, the, the hackle size that he uses on this is about a size 16 or 18. Um, and you may not have anything that long and skinny. It's tough to find. But this is going to work. And you want to just uh, come in and stroke the fibers at the base. And what did I do with them? Oh, there's my scissors. And just uh, cut that and then cut it here on either side of the stem. This just gives you a little bit more grip when you tie it in. So you can see that, here, I'll show it to you on the other camera. They could see the, the fuzzies on the end of that. All right, adjust this light a little bit. Now we're gonna tie that hackle in. And what I like to do is I push the hair back and hold it in place and then bring my hackle in and tie it in. And it doesn't matter which way you tie this hackle in at all. Uh, you could even you could tie it in tip first, butt first. I find it easier butt first. And I have that little nub up there that I want to get rid of. And I'm going to trim that hair too. It's getting in the way. And you come forward. Tom, uh, Warren's asking if you could pre-tie the tail on a pin before adding, adding it to the... Flat. Yeah, I think you could. I think mm -hmm. you could. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think you could. But then it would be, you know, this way you get that over, that overlay by doing it this way. You'd have to tie in. If you pre-tied it on a pin, yeah, you could do it. You could do it. That's another way of doing it. Probably a good way. Yep. Uh, this is my own question. On the design on the on the tail with the black thread, mm -hmm. is that intentional or is it for aesthetics or is it like imitating the fly? It's just oh so well, they have uh, they have segmentations on their abdomen, so it's okay. kind of sort of an imitation segmentation. But it's the only way to get that skinny. It's the only way to get that skinny uh, tail. Anyway, I love it. Ab it's actually the abdomen of the okay. fly. And now you want to you want to start this hackle right in front of that deer hair, and you want it to be really full and heavy, but short. So I'm going to fill that in as much as I can. And this is even too long compared to what, what Doug uses, but I don't have any super long grizzly that's that has that short of fiber. So you're going to go all the way up, and then you're going to push those wings back and come around in front and wind some more hackle. Right to about there. Again, you want to leave some space. I got enough hackle left to tie another dry fly with. Not one of these, but got enough hackle left. Okay. Critical step here. Um, make sure that you cover all the way to the eye with thread and then come back a little bit to right about there. And then take this blue overlay and get your wings set where you want them. And first, take a couple of really tight turns over that bucktail. and then start to work back toward the wing. The problem I find 
with this deer hair overlay is if I don't put enough wraps on there and they aren't really secure, um, when I trim the hair, it pops out from under the wraps. So make sure you put a lot of pressure on those. And then take your hair and lift it up, cut it, a little bit of an angle. And this is the critical part right here. Come slowly forward and finish winding on those butts. So it's got a pretty big head on it. And then you whip finish. You can tweak your wings a little bit if you want. And you whip finish. Yeah. Get out of there. Get out of there. And then you can take your adhesive of choice to finish it off. I would not use super glue because it, it turns everything white and it doesn't look very good. Um, I would use either thin UV cure or standard head cement on this fly. And make sure that that cement soaks back into that deer hair a little bit. And then you can give it a little drop there. And if you want, you can even come back on the body and just give it a little bit of, just to protect those thread wraps. You don't wanna, you don't wanna overdo it. Um, but that's a good idea to give it. I wouldn't put it all over the wing case. Bucktail's pretty durable. And then the fun part, is you grab a piece of paper or a post-it note or something. I'm going to use a post-it note. Just so you don't get marker all over your, um, your tying bench. And you lay your fly flat. Hopefully the head cement's dried. And the fun part is to put the veins on the wings and you just go through and, you know, give it a little, little. And now, you got your nice veined wing and a pretty cool dry damselfly. It's a killer and it's subtle. Put it back in the vise so you can see it. Tom, Tim's asking, what do you think of adding bead eyes? I don't think much of it. <laughs> Um, they're going to make it sink. Uh, I, don't, I don't want it to sink. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe plastic bead eyes. But this is Doug Gibson's pattern. I don't mess with, I don't mess with successful patterns. I will show you one that Doug tied himself. Where is it? Here it is. So this is one that Doug tied himself. I watched him tie this one. See how short that hackle is? It's beautiful. That's one of Doug's. I'd say he'd be proud of me watching this, but I know he's not watching it. Anyway, that 
is Gibson's damsel. And again, you tie it in different colors for sure. Just change the color of the deer hair. Um, it's a neat, it's a neat pattern. It's fun to fish, fun to tie. Um, and you know what, what's cool is when you show it to somebody who doesn't fish and you know, you show them a, like a mayfly and they say, I don't know what the hell that looks like. But if you show that to somebody, even like a kid say, Hey, wh what does this look like? They're going to probably say it looks like a damselfly. So it's a, it's a realistic fly. Um, that's impressionistic enough to be a, a good fish fooler. All right. Questions. Can you show the tail of Doug's fly? Sure, I can. Yeah, Doug's is a little more flared. And I, I like it better. I think it's, it's going to help with the flotation. Let me go to this camera. And so there's the tail of Doug's fly. So you can see it's a lot more flared than mine is. And I, I like that better. I just went back too far. I just went back too far when I tied that body. But it'll fish. It'll work. I'm sure. I'll still I'll still put it in my box. All right. Other questions. What size hook? I use a size 10, Bill. Oh, I'm frozen again. I use a size 10, Bill. Um, but you could tie it in um, you know, whatever whatever hook you want. Um, you know, you could you can use you could use a a 10 or a 12 or a 14 and you could just tie the fly to match the length of the damselflies that you see on your local lake um you could make the body longer or shorter you know the the tail longer or shorter to to match it and i'm not so sure that um the exact exactly imitating the size of the damselflies is that important i think a fish is going to say oh a damselfly I eat those a lot. They taste good, and they're going to grovel it. Steve says, thank you for ruining any chance of actual work I'll need to get done today. That's your problem, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, you might be messing with it all afternoon. Um, it, uh, it, it, takes a little, it takes a little doing, but, um, you know, once you, once you get it, you'll get it. Um, it's not the easiest. Tippet size, 4X. 4X on this fly. For bass, you could go a lot heavier. OX. If you bass, you could use anything. For bass, you could use any tippet you can get through the eye of this fly. Uh, they're not they're not at all leader shy. That doesn't seem to bother bass. So for trout, probably 4X. But for panfish and for smallmouth bass, you'd go four, three or four X. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm going to try the pin idea for the tail. Um, that could probably probably work pretty well and then just slip it out at the end. Oh, the wing material, Jeff, is uh, just bleached elk hair. Stacked. Bass fishing is cheating. No, it's not. Bass fishing is awesome. What's the largest hook you'd use on this pattern for bass? Probably an eight, Chris. You know, as I as I said, um, as I said, um, that you want this fly to be subtle when you fish it for bass. You don't want a, a you know, you don't want a big honk and fly like they normally see or a big lure you want something that's a little more subtle and that that size 10 hook will will hold any large mouth um, that you can hook on this um the markers joe the markers are just um no they're standard waterproof markers that i stole from the uh the uh, office supplies at orvis just a black a uh, black sharpie um don't tell anybody I stole them for fly tying, but um, yeah, they're just standard, standard Sharpies. 
Craig says, I tie one without the wing and using a parachute post and larger hackle. Yeah, that'd be cool, too. That'd be really cool. All right. Any other questions? Ralph likes my haircut. My wife doesn't. She likes it longer, but I got sick of the long hair. Roger says, first time tying along with you, and it turned out great. We'll be tying some more. There goes my afternoon. Hey, Roger, post a picture of your fly on the uh, to uh, tag uh, Orvis Fly Fishing on Instagram so we can see how it looks. That would be cool. Give this a try for bass. I really think in, in hard fish bass waters, uh, this, is, this could be your ace in the hole, uh, particularly uh, in, you know, midday when the damselflies are out and flying around. Um, it's pretty tough to catch bass at that time of day, but I think it's going to work. And it's an awesome fly for big bluegills, too. Um, so what's next? Ah, next Monday, we're tying a Dahlberg diver. And it's probably going to take an hour and a half. Um, I'm bound and determined I'm going to push myself and push you to tie some patterns that that I don't like to tie um, and that, that are really difficult. And Dahlberg Diver is a nasty fly to tie. Um, it's a super effective fly, but it's really hard. To, I, th I find it very hard to tie. Um, and it has a lot of steps. So we're going to tie a we're going to tie a Dahlberg diver next Monday, uh, bass fly, and um, that will be interesting. I'm going to have to practice that one all week. Go out and try these, and let me know how they work by using the markers in this video. They are considered work related supplies. Yeah, I'm I'm sure they're I'm sure it's I'm sure it's legal. I'm sure it's legal. All right, everyone. Well, um, thank you for tuning in. We love doing this. Uh, we, we love uh, all your great questions and your support. And yes, Ralph, Julia, put, a, put the recipe up. Go up, go up in the comments. It's, uh, it's up a little bit higher in the comments. Uh, what tag in Instagram? Uh, at Orvis Fly Fishing, right, Julia? Come on, Julia. Yeah, there yeah. she is. And at Harvest Fly Fishing and Rosenbauer T. Oh yeah, then I'll see it in my own. In yeah. My own. I'll um for those who join a little bit later, they might not see the recipe, so I'm gonna repost it now. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh, because they can't see the con they can't see the con Yeah, for some um, until after we completely post. It's like oh. the glitch that oh, Tanner. Okay. Uh, alerted me to so I'll okay. this now but then in after we after we're over they'll be able to see it okay pretty easy pattern don't need a lot of materials all right everybody well thank you so much and um, again we appreciate you coming on board and um, get out there and tie and fish and go catch some bass and bluegills on this uh, damselfly pattern Gibson damsel shut up dogs all right Thank you, and uh, we'll see you next week.